Good Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us on Action News Jax. I'm Erica Bennett. And I'm Cole Heath. It'll be a beautiful day. Football weather out there for the most part. Let's get you over to first alert meteorologist Aaron Clanahan with a look at that game day forecast. We're starting off the day uh, with just a few isolated showers right along the coast with the first alert Doppler HD. Most spots are still waking up to dry conditions, but if I zoom in, I can show exactly where those few isolated showers are moving right over the Ponte Vedra Beach area towards Jacksonville Beach. Temperatures are mild in the 40s and 50s, 44 in Jacksonville, 44 in Waycross, 41 in Lake City, and then we have mid 50s along the coast. So as we head through the day today, temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer than yesterday. Today does mark the start of a warm up. Low 50s by 8 o'clock this morning, upper 50s by 10, upper 60s by noon with highs today in the low 70s. You can expect a mix of sun and clouds today, but a little bit more cloud cover than sunshine. I'll let you know where I'm expecting those coastal showers today and also just how warm it's going to get in the full first alert forecast. This morning, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is investigating this deadly blaze on the west side that displaced at least 12 people from their homes. Action News Jax first told you about the fire at the preserve at Cedar River Apartments Saturday morning. At least one person has died and a firefighter was put in the hospital for exhaustion. Now we're hearing from neighbors who are right in the thick of it all. Action News Jax, Amber Kriska joins us live. And Amber, one neighbor says they actually tried to help that victim. Yeah, you know, we spoke to a neighbor who knew the woman who died the fire and tried to help. Now, Red Cross tells us at least 12 people are without a home this morning. Then I tried to get my downstairs neighbor out where the fire was, but no one was coming to the door. All I heard was cr like somebody scratching on a door, but no one was coming, so I called 911. India Crocker says she was woken up as the fire was closing in on her second floor home. The flames were just pouring up into my apartment. Crocker didn't want to identify the woman who didn't make it out of the fire, and neither did Teresa Harder, who says she was friends with her. I asked everybody, did, did she get out? And they said she was the only one that didn't come out. According to the Red Cross, six apartments at the preserve at Cedar River were damaged, and at least 12 people have been displaced. Seeing it, it was unbelievable how fast, how the devastation. The Firefighters Union tells Action News Jacks one firefighter was taken to the hospital to be treated for exhaustion. Crocker says she lost everything, and so have her neighbors. Just take a look at these pictures. It shows what's left of her apartment. Everybody's apartment burned down. A lot of stuff was destroyed. Now, people uh, living there believe it was an electrical issue uh, that sparked the fire. However, the investigation is ongoing, keeping uh, many people anxious this, as they wait for answers. Reporting live this morning, Amber Kreska, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News, Jax. Amber, thank you. Certainly a tragedy. We're learning a local mother's blood alcohol level was nearly twice the legal limit when she got into a deadly crash with kids inside her vehicle. Tiny Capelli Eason was booked into the Nassau County Jail Saturday. And investigators say that she was leaving a Halloween party in October with eight children in her SUV when she crashed into a pole. Her eight and nine year old sons were killed in the crash. As far as criminal charges are concerned, they're going to go with the uh, higher charges, the most serious charges. In this case, you're talking about uh, vehicular homicide. If convicted, Capelli Eason could face at least 25 years in prison per DUI charge. New this morning, up to 33 people may have been killed in this fiery truck crash in Kenya. Authorities say the crash happened to the capital Nairobi last night. They say the driver lost control of the truck hauling highly flammable chemicals. The truck then rammed up to 11 other vehicles and caught on fire. It appears the CEO of Exxon Mobil is the leading candidate to be picked for Secretary of State for President-elect Donald Trump. That's according to a source in Trump's team. Trump met with Rex Tillerson in New York on Saturday. Tillerson, he'd actually be a controversial pick, partially because of his ties with Russian leader Vladimir Putin. He gave Tillerson a Russian government award three years ago after Exxon Mobil cut a major oil deal with the Russian company. Meanwhile, Trump's transition team is dismissing reports that Russian hacking helped him win the election. The CIA reportedly is convinced that Russia played a role in the election, but has not released an official statement about it. Trump says there is no evidence to suggest that Russia played any role in the U.S. election. 
Right now, much of the country is dealing with a winter blast. Overnight temperatures well below freezing in some parts of the north. On Friday, heavy winds and freezing winds covered most of the northwest, including Oregon. In New York, some parts got up to 16 inches of snow. Now, snow is expected to blanket much of the plains, Midwest, and Northeast over the next couple of days. In the meantime, Chicago's mayor says he's ready for the snow. The purpose is uh, to make sure, first and foremost, to the public, that uh, the city agencies are all responsible for safe and secure passage through both uh, our streets as well as on public transportation. Chicago and the Midwest will see the worst of it today, but by Monday, the storm will be in New England and in New York just in time for the morning commute. It was all about the superheroes this year as families for the annual J Fun Christmas Party came out to experience it. Action News Jax was proud to be involved in the Christmas party. Our John Bachman, you see him there, was among those who turned out to help spread some cheer among pediatric cancer patients and their families. And Iron Man and Captain America right there too. One of the cutest things we saw was this little girl meeting a bigger Supergirl, her hero. The event helps families take a mental time out from the serious health issues they're facing. It's just relaxing. People don't, you're not having to explain to people what you've been through or anything like that. Everybody's done it and or doing it and they know. And if they're in the process of, you can, so other people who have already done it can help out and try to offer support that way. Santa and Mrs. Claus were among the 100 families who came out to the event. Check this out. Santa Claus and his elves rolling through St. Augustine. This was on Saturday. They were on their way from Jacksonville to Miami gathering toys for the U.S. Marines Toys for Tots Foundation. Kids also got a chance to meet the big guy himself. And take a look at this video from Jacksonville's Biodiversity Festival. We told you about it yesterday. Several families came out to enjoy educational activities all throughout their Saturday. Children, they got the chance to learn more about plants and different animals, including, yeah, that snake there. This was all for the National Park Service's Centennial Celebration. Well, it's nothing short of a Christmas miracle. It happened so fast. The, the fire jumped probably 100 feet in 30 seconds. Why two men say they are thankful to be alive after their boat went up in flames. Starting off chilly this morning, but warmer weather is on the way. I'll tell you when high temperatures get close to 80 degrees in the first alert forecast. Plus, doing it for the kids, how a local organization was able to bring smiles to dozens of kids' faces this holiday season.